The New York Islanders season opener is fast approaching. We're going to break down some of the keys to the season. Plus, how can this team be better than they were a year ago? They'll have to be better to make the playoffs. That plus Matthew Barzal's role and expectations for the upcoming season. All that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Thursday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everybody who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. And you can now also hear us on SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just do a search for Locked On Islanders. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We have got a lot to discuss on today's show. We only have one more show before the start of the Islanders season. So we're going to talk about a lot. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe something you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, send us an email to LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on All the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings, and I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game, so make sure you join me for that. Great to talk a little Islanders hockey, provide some instant insight and analysis. Great to talk Isles hockey with you game time or any time. Here we are. We are one show away from the start of the Islanders season. Tomorrow, we will actually... For the first time since late April, be previewing a game that counts in the standings. And I am excited about that. But let's get started with this. What do the Islanders need to do in order to have a successful season? And I'm going to start with maybe what is the most basic thing. And that is that this team which is, you know, full of veteran players, guys who are 30 and over. And, you know, you you look, there are seven forwards who are 30 and over. You only have one defenseman, although uh, Ryan Polak and Adam Pellick are both 29. Uh, But, you, you know, you've got nine guys on this roster who are 30 and over. So you got to, keep this team first and foremost healthy. The amazing thing about the Islanders last year, and I think sometimes fans do overlook it. The Islanders made the playoffs last year. And during that time, they were missing Matthew Barzal for the last, what, 20 plus games of the season. They were missing Adam Pellick for, what was it, 22 games? And then he was not, you know, back up to speed for at least another five or six games after that. Oliver Wallstrom, obviously, out from December until, you know, hasn't even played again since then. So you're looking at a lot of guys who missed teams due to injuries, and it is something that they were able to overcome and still make the playoffs. Squeak in, absolutely, but still make the playoffs. And now it really becomes a question of staying healthy. 
And look, there are some guys that this team can afford to lose. It is easier to replace some players than others. But, you know, keeping Bo Horvat, Matthew Barzal, obviously, Ilya Sorokin, Adam Pellick, Ryan Polak, uh, Brock Nelson, keeping the core healthy is important. And look, I'm not naive. I understand this team is going to have injuries. Every team does. And when you have a team with as many veterans and guys over 30 or 30 or over on your roster, you're more likely to get guys injured. And it usually takes them a little longer to recover from those injuries. But that being said, this Islanders team needs to keep their most important players healthy and to have them ready to go over the course of the stretch drive and hopefully into the playoffs. I'm going to add one other key to the season that maybe uh, needs to be mentioned. Don't overwork Ilya Sorokin. I think Sorokin was a little bit tired last year. Uh, once the playoffs started, he was pretty good in the playoffs but he wasn't Ilya Sorokin good in the playoffs. So again, the key there is let's get Ilya Sorokin sharp and rested and ready, not like rusty rested, but in the right groove where he's sharp because he's played enough, but not tired because he's played too much. And if you remember after the trade deadline, I believe Semyon Varlamov played in three games or started three games down the stretch out of like 25. Yeah, they needed to do that because they needed to get every point in order to make the playoffs. But you've got to have that number be cut down this year. And that means they've got to be in a better position than they were a year ago coming down the stretch, or they have to have more confidence that Varley can get them those two points more often than three out of 25 games. Another key to me for this season, uh, and I, I think it's important, Noah Dobson has to take another step forward. Dobson, again, 23 years old. He has this year and next year left on his bridge contract. He has to be better in his own zone and he has to be better handling the puck, getting the transition game going and quarterbacking the power play. There is no question that Dauber, his struggles in his own zone and his struggles as the power play quarterback were a big part of why this team spent you know, long periods of time in its own zone and couldn't extricate the puck and couldn't create scoring chances where the players had speed. I'm not blaming it all on Dobson. Heavens knows he, he heaven knows he was not alone in these problems. But to me, if Dobson is going to play top pair or second pair minutes plus power play, he is a key to improving that transition game and quarterbacking that power play. Dobson needs a little more confidence and a little more consistency in order for this team to shore itself up in those two specific areas that were lacking for large parts of last season. One other thing quickly that this team needs to do, they've got to be ready to start every game Too often, the Islanders fell behind or were outshot severely uh, for long stretches where, you know, first 10 minutes of the game, the shots would be 7-1 in favor of the opposition, and the team just didn't look ready to play. And yeah, okay, your goalies can bail you out and keep the game close, but you know what? This is not a team that has a lot of offensive – they're not an elite offensive team. You need this team to not fall too far behind. So being ready when the puck is dropped is an important factor. All right, we're going to continue 
talking about some keys to the season for the New York Islanders. How can they be better? We'll have that plus a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets if your first bet wins or loses. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than now to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and you've got a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and a lot more. And look, you can bet on the NFL. You've got the baseball playoffs. You've got the Islanders season opener coming up on Saturday. You want to place a bet on over-under for points for the Islanders on the season or any player on the Islanders, check out the odds at FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Now, FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. So what else do the Islanders need to do to be better? We've talked about a few of those things, but another one is obviously the power play. Let's not kid ourselves. The power play was 30th in the league last year. For some difficult to understand reason, they brought back John McClain, who was the power play assistant coach. Uh, He needs to do a better job. This team and every day, as you've been hearing me say this for a long time, dating back to last season, maybe even dating back to the season before that, at times, they need to move the puck quicker. They need more variety in their zone entries. It can't just be Matthew Barzal skating the puck in, dipsy doing, holding on to the puck too long, and then losing the puck, or the dump in and hope you get the puck back off the forecheck. There, there's got to be some variety. There's got to be a way to get through the neutral zone on the power play with a little speed and create scoring chances. The players who don't have the puck need to move and make the penalty killers chase them. And the players that do have the puck need to pass the puck or move the puck quickly again to get those penalty killers out of position and make them tired. These are things you need to do, and we just haven't seen them both last year and, let's face it, even in the preseason where, what did they score in six games? One power play goal. It's got to be better. And look, I have no illusions about this power play. They are not going from 30th to third in the league. But get me to 20th or 18th or 16th, if I dare get that bold. Get me to even slightly below average. You know, get me to at least somewhere in the high teens or very low 20s and get me to a little level of consistency where the power play isn't a momentum killer. Too often we've seen the the penalty killing team getting better scoring chances than the Islanders on the power play. And we have seen the Islanders lose momentum because the power play was so weak that the Islanders just could not you know, the, the the opposing team killed the penalty and felt like they got a boost emotionally from it. Get me to average or close to average with this power play. There is talent. Look, it's not elite talent. They do not. The Islanders do not have the power play skills that the Edmonton Oilers have or the New Jersey Devils right now have. But. You know, you have Matthew Barzal and Anders Lee and Bo Horvat and Kyle Palmieri. These are not guys who can't score with a little extra time and space, but they've got to be smart. They've got to be efficient and they've got to be at least average. The power play is going to be important for this team. Another reason this team can be better. I think they have a little more speed than they have in the past. They acquired Pierre Engvall at the trade deadline last year. Engvall was essentially 
to replace the speed of Anthony Bevilier. And Bo, again, no longer with the Islanders. <coughs> Hopefully, he, uh, you know, does well in Vancouver. But Engvall added a lot of juice to the second line. And we saw the chemistry of Nelson, Engvall, and Palmieri. But now you're also adding Julian Gauthier. And if you got Gauthier, Engvall, Barzal, Dobson, Aho, and a healthy Palmieri, right off the bat, that's six players with pretty darn good speed. And no, again, they're not competing with the New Jersey Devils. They're not competing with the Edmonton Oilers for a, a team that is going to just skate circles around the opposition. But they don't have to necessarily be slow and old either. And adding Julian Gauthier, who I think has the potential to really give this team a boost if he can play up to that level that, that he was drafted in the first round. The talent is there. I think he has a chance to be a bit of a difference maker for this Islanders team if he plays to his potential. So uh, having a little extra speed in the lineup, to me, that is a good thing. And hopefully, hopefully, it pays off for this Islanders team. And they're going to need to do that. So hopefully the chemistry between Bo Horvat and Matthew Barzal, having Bo for a whole 82 games and Engvall for a whole 82 games makes a difference. And maybe, just maybe, if you give him a little time to get back into game shape, Oliver Wallstrom can make a difference too. This team needs to shoot a little bit more. This team needs to score a little bit more. And again, I know the Islanders are not going to lead the league in scoring. Last year, they were, what, 22nd in goals scored. Get me into the teens. Get me 18, 16. Get me toward the middle. If the power play is a little bit better, you can do that. If the speed is there and is utilized a little bit better, if the chemistry between Bo and Barzi is there, and these are little things that can make a difference. Look, everybody talked in the offseason about, oh, yeah, you know, the Columbus Blue Jackets made moves. They're better. Eric Carlson went to the Pittsburgh Penguins. They're going to be better. Okay, yes, Eric Carlson is a very good player. He's going to help the offense of the Pittsburgh Penguins. But the Penguins' biggest problems were goaltending and defense and scoring depth. Carlson isn't fixing the goaltending and the defense and the scoring depth. Well, maybe the scoring depth a little. But realistically speaking, this Islanders team, if they play to their potential, can be better than they were a year ago. And is it going to be good enough to make the playoffs? We have to see. But are they capable of making the playoffs? Absolutely. It'll take a little puck luck. It'll take a, some improvement from some players. It'll take a little health. It'll take some smart coaching, which I hope we have as Lane Lambert enters his second season. But I think it's very possible. And uh, we'll see how that plays out. All right. We have our Islanders birthday of the day coming up. Uh, a, a goaltender who played two seasons, well, one and a half seasons for the Islanders in the late 2000s and early 2010s, plus uh, Matthew Barzal. What do we expect from him this year? What does he need to do to have a successful season? We've got all of that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. The NHL season is finally here. And look, will the Islanders have the season we've been yearning for? I hope so. I absolutely love the NHL. I know you do too. And that's why I want to tell you about the Sleeper app. The Sleeper app is the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. And it's my go-to for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash 
on Daily Fantasy. I mean, would you put together a bet with Bo Horvat, Matthew Barzal, and Ilya Sorokin? You could also play Daily Fantasy for the NFL, NBA, MLB, college football, all on Sleeper. The NHL has never been more exciting than it is now with players like McDavid, Ovechkin, Crosby, McCarr. Just pick more or less on stats for these stars. Stats like goals, assists, save, plus, minus, and more. You heard me, Islander fans. 100 times payouts on sleepers to start paying attention. Get your picks right, and you could win big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL, and you can get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. So we continue our player-by-player -player look at the Islanders and what they need to do to be successful, what their roles are going to be. Well, yesterday, everydayers, you know, we discussed uh, Adam Pellick today, Matthew Barzal. And Barzy, look, this has got to be the year that Barzi improves his point production. Get me to that 20-goal mark. That last year, 14 goals in 58 games. He wasn't far off. He was on pace to be very close. Get me between 20 and 25 goals. Get me to the 65 or 70-point mark. And be smarter with the puck. I think that's another thing we need from Matthew Barzal. Don't hold the puck too long. Don't have those, those giveaways. Now, his giveaways were down. Uh, he had 82 giveaways in 2021, 20, 2022, 20, and 68 last year. But again, he played, uh, you know, 15 fewer games. So again, you want those giveaways and those times when he's overhandling the puck to be reduced and you need him to be more productive on the power play. The shots also need to increase. Uh, he had 139 shots in 58 games last year. I want, if he plays 82 games, get those shots on goal up closer to 200. And, you know, if he has 200 shots on goal and shoots at the same shot percentage of 10.1 that he had a year ago, bingo, there's your 20 goals. So, you know, for Matthew Barzal, it's got to be a little smarter, a little more aware, and just to to get accustomed to playing on the wing, which, barring injuries, he's very likely to play there for most of the season, and then connecting with Bo Horvat and whoever that third winger is going to be because the Islanders have got to – have their top line producing, you know, down the stretch in the playoffs last year, you had the second line being the most productive line. If you want to be successful, the old cliche is your best players have to be your best players. Matthew Barzal is definitely one of the Islanders best players. And therefore they need a little more from him this coming season. If they hope to be a better team this coming season. So Matthew Barzal, definitely somebody we need a lot from this year, and hopefully he is equal to the task. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day, and finally we're on time. <clears throat> Today is the 54th birthday of former Islanders goalie Dwayne Rolison. The Simcoe, Ontario native, four seasons at UMass Lowell, made his NHL debut with the Calgary Flames in 1996-97, then played for Buffalo, Minnesota, Edmonton, before joining the Islanders in 2009-2010. That was a, a solid season for Roley, 50 games, a 3.00 goals against average, and a 907 save percentage. The following year, played 20 games for the Islanders, played even better, 264 goals against, 916 save percentage, but the Islanders traded him to the Lightning, where he excelled for one year and then struggled for another before hanging up his skates. The career numbers, 2.72 is the goals against, 908 the save percentage, and 
he won 227 games in his 606 game NHL career. One of his better games with the Islanders. I love this game. A road game in Toronto against the Maple Leafs. We go back to November 23rd, 2009. Obviously, Dwayne Rolison, the goalie for the Islanders. Uh, Vesa Toscala, the goalie, the starter for the Maple Leafs, although he was eventually relieved by Jonas Gustafsson. And in this game, the Islanders, it went to overtime. Josh Bailey gets the game winner with less than a minute left in OT. But the Islanders were outshot in this game, 61 to 21. Yeah, 61 to 21. And they won four to three. Dwayne Rolison, the Islander goalie, made 58 saves to win the game. And he was in goal for 64 minutes and 17 seconds. That was almost 61 shots in 64 minutes. A shot a game, a a minute rather. And he managed to get the victory when the shots on goal were almost three to one in favor of the Maple Leafs. So Dwayne Rolison, Roly the goalie, or one, one of many, one of a couple of guys who had that nickname for the Islanders, 54 years old today. He is our Islanders' birthday of the day. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. Yeah, we're going to preview the season opener against the Buffalo Sabres. I'm going to have some bold predictions for the season for the Islanders. And we conclude our player-by-player look at this team with J.G. Pajot. So lots to get to there. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.